Hi guys, Clyde here, live from Pixel Pro Display Studios. Thank you for joining me in this Tips and Tricks video. We're going to do something really interesting today. I think everybody's going to enjoy. Let's try and put some text on some high definition pixel matrices on the wreaths. Let's get started. All right, let's go ahead and get started with this. I've switched over now to, um, oh my gosh, I'm a little tiny down in the corner. You need to see me. Oh no, you don't. Anyway, <laughs> anyway um, these are the three models we're gonna work with. We're gonna work with the Boscoyo Mesmerizer, we're gonna work with the uh, Gilbert Engineering um, Mother of All Reese, and then we also have the uh, one of the uh, original high def props that Boscoyo came out with in 2018. Uh, this is a uh, this is a wreath that I believe it has I believe this this mega wreath here. This is the high uh, high resolution. It has a real nice artwork done. In any event, I digress. Let's go ahead and talk about the basis, the understanding of how the text is going to have to work. Um, because it starts all with the submodels. If you don't understand submodels. I'm going to link a uh, video right up here, directly above me, that talks about some submodels. Now, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Submodels are built from a start point, a point, not a numerical number, and they move in a directional fashion. Directional is definitely important. We're going to go ahead and look at the mesmerizer. And uh, as you can see here, we have a couple rings that are created. I think I call them circles. I do. And uh, if you notice, if we actually click on the Boscoyo Mesmerizer, uh, you can see that uh, layers number 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, up to 16, all of those layers have 96 pixels in them. So they're all equal um, layers, and that makes it perfect for you to utilize to put text onto. Now, we've already created for the same thing. We've created rings in this submodel, and there's also... Uh, rings that are set up here in the Mother of All Reefs. Uh, I've gone ahead and created some groups that work with these, and I call them the Mother of All Reef group ring text and the Mesmerizer rings text. And then uh, off of, uh, we, have a, we have another group, I believe, that I set up also for the, uh, where you at, where you at? Here's our little mega reef. Um, and we do have, we, we have a couple groups here that we're going to uh, utilize as well for those wreath rings. Here's that wreath rings right there. So if you click on the wreath rings, you'll see that it's one group, but if you go into it, it's a little different. See, this is why it's important that you open up and download, because you can go, go and download all three of these models from the model download uh, in X Lights, and I recommend that you do that and maybe play with this for yourself. If you have your own wreath that you created on your own and you need to do this, just keep in mind that it's very important. You have at least a bare minimum of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers, seven rings in order to do this. If you have six, it'll, it may work. You might have to finagle things. Uh, the bottom of your J's and G's might get cut off in the Y and so forth, uh, or Q, uh, but you're still able to utilize it. Um, but you get the full effect of the text if you have at least seven pixels tall. What we'll do next is uh, we'll get right into it with the text effect. We're going to go ahead and grab the text effect and bring it right down here. So this is the default text effect. Um, we're working with the default text effect on the mesmerizer rings. And as you can see, it doesn't do anything because we need to add some sort of text in here. So here we go, we have Merry Christmas, and you don't see anything on the model preview or anything like that, and it's kind of kind of disheartening. Like, it, what, what do you gotta do to make this work? Well, if we're working within a group, we're going to have to utilize something that uh, you might not be familiar with. And we're gonna go over to this layer settings box, and we're going to work within the render style. So, now if your mouse, if your mouse has a scroll wheel, a scroll wheel, that's, that's going to help you here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over top of the render styles. And keep in mind, we're at a group level. We're not at an individual prop level. And we're going to click on the effect. We're going to watch our model preview. Let me go ahead and grab this and pull this over here. 
And uh, we don't need the house preview. That's not important. Um, we're going to go ahead and we're going to scroll through our render styles and see if we can have some sort of a change. So single line, it actually puts some colors up there. Uh, let's go to as pixel. No, nope. horizontal stack didn't help us. Uh-oh, we've got something here. Uh, we have vertical stack. And it looks like it looks like the R's upside down. Well, that kind of sucks. Um, what about uh, what? What else do we need to know? What else do we need to know? Let's try. Let's try horizontal stack scale. That didn't do anything. Let's see. Uh, let's go back to. Uh, uh, that's vertical stacked is working. Um, here we have vertical stack scaled. So there's two render styles where you can actually make out the text, but it's wrong. And we're going to go in and fix this. So let's stick with vertical stacked scaled. And let's come over here. Oh, well, let's come down to the transformation box. And let, let's rotate the buffer. And we'll send the text out at 180 degree difference. Let's see what happens. So now we have, and it looks like it's backwards. Um, OK, so how do we deal with this? Let's try flipping it horizontally. And did that work? And let's try flipping it vertically. Ah, here we go. So now looking at the top of the wreath, because we were able to change the way that you transform the buffer on top of the submodels, we were able to get some text on the wreath. Now, why is this important? And this is important because you have to go through multiple steps with different props in order to get this result. So what works for me in my instance may not work for you, but this is how you're going to go through and dis uh, determine the best way to get text onto that matrix for you. So if we go ahead and let's animate this. So you can you can come over here to the text effect. And if you need to learn more about the text effect, we did an entire webinar series on it, uh, very detailed, uh, very uh, specific. Please go check out that video. A couple other videos on the PPT, PPD YouTube channel about the text effect. You can learn a little bit more if you follow that link up there. Um, so let's go ahead and change the movement here. Let's go left, right? and uh, Correct. And uh, let's speed it up here. Well, that looked good. Let's speed it up a little bit. Maybe maybe you're not going to read it. That's okay. But now it looks like when we slow it down. I think we can slow it down by stretching it out and slowing it down. There we go. Merry Christmas. See, isn't that wonderful? We're able to get text on here. But the difference is, the thing is, is that this flip vertical and vertical stack scaled is set up just for this wreath only. So my recommendation is to do a effects preset. And what you can come over here and do is you can right click on the main screen of XLight, your sequencing screen, and go to your effects preset menu. Now, it popped up on my other window over here. Let me bring it over here. So, this is your effects preset. And we'll call, a, we'll call this a new preset. We'll, I've, I've clicked on the effects preset label there. And we'll call this Wreath M O. Oh, this is Mesmerizer M E. And we'll call it Mesmerizer Text, right? We'll click OK. And what's cool is that X Lights now is generating exactly what you see on a standard uh, 40 by 40 matrix, 48 by 48 matrix. So you can see that it is going uh, flipped vertically. And what X Lights did is it remembered all these settings, it remembered the colors, and it remembered the text. And if we were to delete, this we could just select the the background there and we can click and apply preset and now the uh, now we can close this down you can see that the effect is back and that's as easy as applying a preset great right well let's keep going let's do something a little bit more and show you if we copy and paste this onto let's say the mother of all wreath rings let's go ahead and paste this and let's see what happens. Okay, now it's now it's kind of flying because I think there's less pixels inside the mother of all wreath than there are on the uh, uh, on the uh, mesmerizer. So we'll slow it down so that we can see it. And it says, "Uh oh, it, you can't read it." So here's the problem: 
the submodels between the Mother of All Reefs and the Mesmerizer are completely different. The submodels are built differently, but they're congruent because you can see the text, right? So let's go ahead and do, use our little scrolly wheel on our mouse, and let's go ahead and flip through and see if we can't change the, um, the uh, render style so that it works better for us. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's leave, it, let's leave it vertically stacked because that worked. Let's go ahead and change and transform the buffer. Let's, let's uh, rotate it 180 degrees and see what happens. Okay, and now it's going the other way, not really helping. Let's turn off the transformation. And now we have, coming from the right, we have Mary, and there is Christmas. I think that rather worked pretty well. We can speed that up a little bit, maybe get, maybe we change two colors here, right? So we have M-E-R-R-Y, Mary, Christmas. Hey, and, and we've done it. So now that we've got it, let's go ahead and crea create our effects preset. Right click, click effects preset. Let's go ahead and click new preset. And this is the M-O-A-W, Mother of All Reese. And this is text. And we'll save it. And now if we click on it, X lights will render it for you. And see, it looks like normal, right? So now you can see that he, it, what doesn't work for one may, may uh, uh, work fine on another. So you have to test things out and see how they work. So now what about the last, the last thing here? So in, in the, uh, and I'll show you this real quick. If we go into the mega wreath, we have a wreath group. It all, again, this all depends on how the submodels were built. The mega wreath has a wreath submodel. And if we go in and we look at this in the submodel dialog, and we click on the wreath, you can see that instead of each of these submodels being an individual ring and being inside a group, this is the group right here. So we've created the group, and if we click on each one of these individually, you can see the individual submodels on each ring right there, correct? So let's go ahead and try putting something on the individual wreath model, uh, submodel the whole model itself. So let's go in and we're not going to work off of the mega wreath model. We're going to double click on the wreath model and you can see here we have wreath and that is the sub model. So we're going to we're going to sequence directly onto the sub model. Let's go ahead and select our uh, effect copy and we'll go ahead and paste it here. Let's see if we can get some text on here just with what was standard. Now what do we have here? We have C it looks like it looks like it's working, um, but is it legible? And it looks like it looks like a W is is reversed. So let's go ahead and transform the buffer. Let's flip vertically and see if that does it. There's the M E R R Y C H R I S T M A S, and it looks like it works. Now I'm going to do something because we're in a much lower definition model. Let's go ahead and change the X light font from bold seven by seven to let's go let's go thin six by six, and see if that helps. It looks like that helps a little bit better, and possibly maybe a solid color. One solid color might be better. And there you go, and it, it it's it it's just that easy. We just have to do some manipulation with the text. We have to do some manipulation with the. Um, with the buffer and the transformation and the render style depending on whether we're using a group in X lights or whether we're directly doing it on a submodel where they're all stacked into one submodel. So guys, that's your tips and tricks for today. This is uh, this is this is definitely an interesting video. It's probably a little longer than what I expected it to be, but I think it, nonetheless it's a wonderful lesson and I hope that you guys can take this back and begin to use it and have a little bit of fun with it. So guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video hit the big like button down below. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Share the video with people if you like it. Um, and remember, if you appreciate the things that we do here at Pixel Pro Displays, please consider joining the PPD Sequence Club where you get one awesome sequence each and every month and you get awesome preset effects, including effects like this. Maybe I'll throw this up on the website as a preset for everybody. So guys, thanks again so much for watching. If you want some more information on RGB and how to do this kind of thing in x lights, we have an awesome community which you should totally join. It's our Facebook PPD, PPU Facebook group. You can 
click on the link in the video description down below and get joined to the group. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Take care.